Stink Schlereth. How are you, buddy? I'm good, thank you. Yeah? Thank you, yes. Okay, awesome. Yeah. Glad we got that out of the way. <laughs> All right, Stink, let's talk some what? Pittsburgh Steelers. The Steelers right. pulled off a right. crucial win against the Patriots last week, and as a reward for that, they get to face the 12-2 and New Orleans Saints. Important to note, guys, had they lost, they would still be facing yes. the New Orleans Saints. Over the last six weeks, no defense has been better than New Orleans. Big Ben spoke on the Steelers' focus heading into Week 16. We just want to, you just want to get in the playoffs. It doesn't matter um, how you get in. You just want to get in. Obviously, you, the first and second seed, you liked it, but I don't think we can get that now. So let's just find a way to get in. And how do you, how do you attack a defense that, that seems so well rounded? You know, they're strong in pretty much every area. Uh, just try and protect the ball. Um, the guys up front are going to have their hands full with the pass rush and the noise, like I talked about. And then, um, you know, we're just going to have to win our matchups. All right, Stink, besides protecting the ball, how does the Steelers' offense match up with what has been a very good Saints right. defense over the last couple uh, of weeks? No, I think the Steelers match up with any defense. I mean, you look at the weapons they have on the outside with Brown, with uh, Smith-Schuster. Washington has played really well of, of late. late. Yeah, of late. So, uh, you know, I think that's the big thing. The, the thing to me that is always shocking about the Steelers is the Steelers have a, a really good offensive line. The Steelers, to me, on film, choose not to run the ball most of the time. They're 30th in the league in, in running the ball, and you saw kind of the formula. Now, when you run the ball, you don't put up a lot of points usually, right? Yes. You mm -hmm. control the tempo of the right. game. You control the line of scrimmage. You do all those things. But again, against New England, they ran the heck out of the ball. They only scored 17 points. So that's what you get into. You get into a little bit of a, a fight because you have one bad run and coordinators like, well, we've got so many weapons on the outside. Mm -hmm. And the Steelers choose oftentimes just to abandon it. And I thought the thing they did better than anything else last week in winning against New England was they said, no, we are going to stay true to what we are. We're gonna stay true to running this football and creating some big plays outside. But again, you know, CC will tell you, and any offensive coordinator you talk to in this league will tell you, hey, we gotta run the ball, we gotta control the tempo, but we gotta throw it to score. But don't yes. you think part of that is because for so many weeks this season, they weren't sure what they had at running back. Once they knew for sure uh, El Bell wasn't coming back, they knew they had James Conner, maybe not so sure. Jalen Samuels, maybe not so sure. So they went to the pass because that's what they do know and they have the personnel. If we wanted to make an excuse, we could make that for Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. But as Stink said, not only this year, but the last several years, even when they have El Bell, it's a luxury that you can put him outside, but their overall philosophy as an organization is, no, we're not going to punch you in the mouth. We got a great quarterback, a Hall of Fame quarterback, sure. and we can develop wide receivers. I mean, if you look right. at the guys it's they have drafted and developed, like, they are like... There was a time when the Pittsburgh Steelers, and I think, Stink, you can relate to this with John Elway. John Elway, man, he dropped back. He's going to sling it. They're going to win on John Elway. Man, they got Terrell Davis like, listen, forget that. Our philosophy is we're getting ready to start doing this. And that's what you're saying about Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. They don't wake up in the morning and say, listen, this is what we're going to do. We're going to lean on the running back because they've been so skilled and because of their quarterback. It's just developed. We could make an excuse and say James Conner, but even when they have L. Bell, when they get in the big games, their philosophy is uh, they're going to put the, and they might throw it to L. Bell out of the backfield eight or ten times and maybe hand it to him ten or twelve. Never that philosophy. We're just going to take over the game with the physicality. And, and to your point, this past week they actually overtook Minnesota. Minnesota, which was passing at 66 percent of the times, were one of the reasons they fired their defensive coordinator. They then offensive ran. Coordinator. Oh, I'm sorry, offensive mm -hmm. coordinator. Pardon me, John D. Filippo. They then ran the ball 40 times. Did Minnesota this past week? This past week, now Pittsburgh has overtaken Minnesota. They passed the ball on the highest percentage of snaps of any team in the league, nearly 67%. Now, mm. I, I understand everything everyone at the table is saying, but if there was ever a game where an offensive coordinator is going to look at the other team's strengths and weaknesses and say, man, we better be able to sling it around the yard, it would be when you're playing the number one rush defense and the number 28 pass defense. When you are playing a game in New Orleans in perfect conditions where you are going to say, and James Conner's not likely to play, say, okay, all of what you're saying might be true, but I don't think they're going to be able to change philosophy this week against this defense. This is one defense. of the big problems in stat sheets. Yes. When it doesn't okay, show the, the no, Because last you're not month. in the game. And you don't realize Drew Brees is over there. And if I go three and out and give them a short field, and I came back my quarterback up 40 times, because they'll get after Big Ben. And what does Big Ben do when he gets a lot of pressure? Turns it over. Okay. Now you're getting ready to get boat raced in, in New Orleans. So you got to be careful when you go into these games because that's the way, man, 
I, I've had some great coordinators, and they really sat me down on those Tuesdays when the guys weren't there and explained to me, Chris, this is the way you attack. And there were a lot of times we went against defenses a lot like New Orleans is right now. And he said, you know what we're going to do, Chris? We're going to go in there and run the ball right down their throat because they sitting in their meeting room, swearing up and down, I'm getting ready to throw it 45 times, you guys. Now, we're going to run it. And then we're going to play action, and then ultimately I need you guys to take over the game. But our philosophy going in is because they think right. we're going to do that, we're going to, and that's the New England. That's how New England right. wins year in, year out by doing the direct opposite. Right. A lot of times what you look at when you look at a stat sheet is you see that the number one run defense, you see the number 28th rush defense, or excuse Pass me, passing defense. defense. And, and then you get you get tricked into not looking at the rest of the, how the games have played out. So, that so much of the time during the beginning of the year, they were so far ahead that of teams. teams of course. The teams yes. don't run the ball. They yeah, choose they not to like run the ball. They went through like a 10-week period. Right. And so I'm not saying that they're not good at that. But here's the deal. And I heard you earlier on the program because I was sitting over there listening. You know, I was taking in notes, <laughs> mental notes. Thank you. Sometimes but write it down. Yeah, I should write it down. <laughs> but here's the deal. And Chris is 100% right. We can throw one over the top, 70-yard touchdown, everybody celebrates. And you know what the defensive players go? Ah, they got us on that one. It's not a big deal. When you constantly just cram it down somebody's throat, two yards, six yards, eight yards, four yards, 12 yards, 14 yards, man, it's demoralizing to a defense. Demoralizing. And so I just, I just believe if Pittsburgh is going to win in New Orleans with that crowd noise and all the things that they have to do, you, you damn well better be a balanced football team and take some of the pressure off that passing and game. And stink that passing game, when you're in New Orleans, you're just a fraction off that snap count. So now if I back though if I back that quarterback up, that left tackle, that right tackle, now Pittsburgh's got a good offensive but the line. D line's getting the jump. Oh, oh man. So you can. have to you have to really bake that into what the stats say compared to how this game is really going to well, play right. out. And it, New Orleans is one of the loudest places uh, one of the loudest places in the National Football League, and I will tell you, going to your team, Kansas City, going in there and playing when I was with the Denver Broncos in that environment, we would scrap pile a third of our offense. We would not, I mean, we would we would commit to running. These are the runs we're going to run. We're going to commit to it. We know we're not going to have a great yard per carry average, but we have to get attempts. Attempts are important. And then we took out all of our seven-step drops, all of our five-step drops that had a hitch, Mm -hmm. Right, you know mm -hmm. where you're hitching once right. and then go. You, like, just like we're, we're throwing all go, we're throwing you know Z because shallow the cross. Yes. Throw, you know what I'm saying? Yes. The mm -hmm. pass rushers were going to get a jump on the offensive line. Every 100 percent, 100 percent of the time. That's, that's the, why the you're one saying advantage you, you have as an offense is snap count. It, when you go on a, pl a place like that, mm -hmm. it takes away that advantage. Well, right. and so the the other part of this football game that this is one of the more jarring numbers for any playoff team this year is the Steelers are minus nine in the turnover differential. Yeah, it's Every other team that is minus eight or more, you're talking about the worst teams in football. You look and at the card. none of them have a Hall of Fame quarterback. Correct. Who's touching the ball 65 times on average a game. And it's not like the team has just been caught with all of a sudden a bad fumble year where all the fumbles, every time the ball goes yeah. on the ground, they're not recovering it. These are the vast majority, 75% of these are Big Ben turnovers, either interceptions or fumbles. And so that, that you talked about the, the Saints boat racing them. If you, all, if you lose the turnover battle in New Orleans, you're sunk. Mm -hmm. you, you, there, 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 there's no mm -hmm. path to victory. So whether they are going to focus on the run, the pass, or an even distribution, what they have to do is take care of the ball. Not have someone coming around the corner, strip Cam Jordan, strip sack and Big Ben, not Big Ben throwing those red zone picks he loves so much. Like they, to have a chance in this game, they have to take care of the ball. And if they don't win this game, we could be here Monday and they're in eighth place in the AFC. Like that is, even with the win last week, sure. that's still available to them. So we've gone through all the things that the Steelers really need to do, the things they need to work on, the things they haven't done well. Mm -hmm. Does this Steelers team still invoke fear in other teams? I know they're having an off year, but when you look on the schedule and you, oh, you have the Steelers, no matter how they're playing, does a team still look at that as, oh, this is like the Patriots oh, lore, right. this is like do, the Packers do, lore, regardless of how they're playing? Big ben? Yes. Do, do they have Antonio Brown? No. Yes. Do they have Smith Schuster? Yes. Yeah, you don't right. They and typically fear. they're gonna have twenty thousand show up too, no matter where they're playing. No, no matter where they travel, they travel great. I mean, that, yeah, absolutely. This is a team that has so much talent. You can make an argument, at least offensively. They've got a couple of offensive Pro Bowlers on the offensive line. They got mm -hmm. guys on the outside that are Pro yes. Bowlers. They got running back that's a Pro Bowler. They got a quarterback. I mean, this is a team that when you look at them talent-wise, you can make an argument. They're as 
talented as any team you have offensively in the whole National Football League. So, of course, they invoke fear. All right. You got to stop them. Okay. Yes. Stink. Good question. Stick around. Thank yeah. you. Coming up next, though, we got three time heavyweight champion Lennox Lewis. Oh, oh man. Oh, I got okay. Us. Okay. Talk about invoking okay. fear. Right. How are you, sir? How are you doing? Good to see you. Julia.